The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. So again, we go here, back up to the examples, intro, group theory, start it up. Right, and then our first example is group theory one, and it just goes through. And basically, I sort of came up with a way in a spreadsheet to define the functions I was looking at, and then start create combinations of them, and then do very simple tests on associativity and 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 distributed and all that stuff. And if you actually look at the tests I do, you might be like, you might blanch and be like, really? You, you said that? You 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 declared that it was fully associative? It's not like I went and did formal proofs for every of these things. I just sort of did some very quick uh, numerical tests. Uh, the semi-ring uh, test is, actually takes a while here, um, as you can as you can see. Um, and this will take a minute here, and it even appears to be hanging. Oh no, it's not good. Okay. We'll let it go through that. So, in fact, while it does that, we can look at here. Look at so basically these were inputs. So basically, I have kind of my different what I call the sort of the key function. I have union and intersection, and then I have the sort of the three possible conditions: v1 less than v2, v1 equal to v2, v1 greater than v2, and then essentially the different types of of operators, you know, the results that can occur from those. And so this is a CSV file, and we read it in as associate array. And so, you know, it looks like a spreadsheet, and I can actually have columns named v1 less than v2. You know, very powerful. And in fact, I'm even able to pass that column into the MATLAB eval function and have it actually execute it, which is nice. So I can use you know, I can actually have code in my column or row names and then have, you know, operations performed based on that, which is, I think, a nice thing that you can do when you have, you know, rows, when you allow strings to be in your set. Likewise, MATLAB will formally parse nan as nan and plus minus inf as minus inf, and so I can get all that functionality out of there, which is very nice. Oops. All right. And then it goes through, let's see here. Right, and these are just different tests that we do on those. Let's see how we're doing here. Oh, almost done. Not a number. I sort of, yeah, I kind of, I like, I use that as kind of like, it has a lot of the properties of null when you add it to different functions. So I kind of, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm using that for that, and it, and it works out pretty well. So it's, it's I triple E failure state modes or whatever. It's how it's supposed to be. It, it, it appears like that, you know. I can't remember if there's a plus nan and a negative nan as well. No, no, it's just nan. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then actually, it goes through here, and I think. See what we're doing. Yeah, these just these are just various little ways of inputting. These are just different values, just different little spreadsheets that you can make for exploring these different types of things, and you can just write them as little CSV files. Very useful construct here. I do apologize for the length the time is taking. I think um, um, having the QuickTime video recording going at the same time is is causing the poor computer to to sweat a little bit more than I than it does normally. It usually doesn't take this long. So. And 
the outputs that it comes up with. So these are all, it basically writes all these out. So look at here. This shows, I ask it to basically, you know, generate all those 200 pairs. So it will do for different each key and every whatever, it can go and just generate those for me. So I just create this little thing and it goes through and just sort of creates this whole function and then writes that out as a CSV itself, which is very convenient. Again, these are things you can do. I think this is the one where we came up with all the felds. Oh yeah, it doesn't really fit there, but you can see these are the pairs that it found and it shows this is the zero operator. And again, this is all done with D4M, kinds of values that it can store, you know, different types of things. This is how we made all the tables that are in the, uh, there. oh, it's writing out results. That means it's done. There we go. And so the main one I just want to show you is that you know, we read in that function, func range, and we permuted it. And if we do display full a func, you can see there's the full combination of values as we saw there. So there's really nothing here for you. It's not ex I expect you to go using um, D4M to do group theory things. So there's not really the point of these examples. I, I did. It's more just showing that you can, you know, when you when you go into this larger space, problems that you might not solve linear algebraically, all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, my, you know, if I have strings and other types of things, it really opens up the flexibility. And I thought that was very neat that you could do this, and it, it just handled the data very nicely and without any any real uh, any real difficulty. So, um, so with that, that's the end of this lecture. Um, I don't know if there's any cla uh, final questions before we proceed. All right, very good. And please, if you haven't signed up on the sheet, please please do t please do so. Thank you very much.